Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. We're back with a 5 versus 5 game on the Hilly Plateau. I know I've done a 4 versus 4 on this before. I cannot remember if I did a 5v5, but essentially it's the same with the addition of a support slot right there in the back, whether it be air, extra ground, whatever. You know, it's probably going to end up being air on a 10v10 map, but we don't have to think that way necessarily. This map is an awesome balance of expansion versus eco. You have to expand to get more mass extractors because you only start with four in your home slot. And there's a nice bit of mass all over the place for those who wish to venture forth and claim it. So basically, you have to expand, but it tends to have a little bit longer games because of the map size and the well done little chokes around the expansions out here. I say well done because it doesn't bottle up too much. There's enough avenues of access that you don't end up with firebase wars like you have on some other maps. Let's go ahead and introduce the players and then we'll jump into this game. One other thing before I think about that, um, Potato, Orbital Potato and I are posting regular casts. That is now a thing on Monday, 1 p.m. Those are going live. So two games per week, one on his channel, one on mine. If you hit up the Orbital Potato videos, the link is in the description on those. So be sure to check those out. On the north side, we have Robo Danny taking Seraphim Soul Crusher as Aeon in the support slot. Mr. Memto. He is actually M. Memento? M. Memto. Hmm. I'm already having name troubles and we're only on the third person. He is taking Aeon. We're going to call him Memto. We've got MSG. The not-so-dangerous <laughs> food additive. <laughs> he is Seraphim on the front, and yet another Seraphim for Red. That would be TGX Legend Lore, the one and only. On the south side, we have White as the color of choice for UEF. That is Parzival. And we've got another UEF for Headphone Guy, D slash 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 B whatever. Grim Preacher taking UEF, and then in the support slot, Spirit with Aeon and then one more guy that would be Bulletproof Bob excellent name there as well he is taking Cybern that is all the people and I am a little bit scatterbrained today I'm trying to get myself up into hyper mode because I have not fully caught up on sleep yet and if I'm not careful I will start just lagging all over the place and yes there is such a thing as mental lag and you thought all those gamers were complaining about internet lag <laughs> no it is actually lack of caffeine in your system lack of sleep whatever it may be there is such a thing as people lag as well and I do suffer from it quite frequently as I'm sure a lot of you guys do. So, multiple ACUs headed out towards the middle. As I mentioned just a minute ago, there is a ton of mass to be had if you wish to dip your toe into the riches in the middle. And we've got bombers coming around the outside edge. Kudos to Soul Crusher for shooting for double T1 bomber right off the bat. Those are going to head into the back. That would be a beautiful bomb right there, but that engineer is going to bypass it and head straight for the cluster of NGs at the rear. Nope, turning. Where are you going with that? This bomber not killing anything either, winging around the backside edge. So it looks like that one is going to swing back for those. Trying to do a little bit of damage, but not really focusing very well on where he actually wants to drop those bombs. Killing the P-Gen and laying some damage down on that T2 mass extractor, which was a ludicrously early upgrade for Spirit. Look at that thing. 3 minutes and 40 seconds, and he has already almost got 2 Mass extractors upgraded to T2 thanks to dumping all of those engineers onto the mass deposit in the back. Headphone guy is taking damage from two people. Overcharged to the face from Legend Lore. Look at MSG soaking up a little damage, acting as a meat shield for headphones. And those guys are going to head back. Not worth it to stay up in the fight. Two T1 artilleries trying to lay down a little damage themselves, but one of them is going to die. All right, so that's the initial engagement. Now we get to watch everybody spread out. And, well, I was about to say turtle up, but I don't think there's going to be much turtling, as I'm already seeing a lot of T1 units flowing towards the center of the map. More T1 bombers. Looks like the northern side is a huge fan of these destructive little buggers. Got a bomb going down on that striker. Unfortunately, it was an Aeon bomb, which means it's not a one-hit kill, but the second round should get it. Another one going unused. On the north side, let's see. Mass extractor upgrades everywhere. That's what you get. When you have a ton of reclaim and only a few mass extractors, everybody just drops those upgrades immediately 
in order to have that mass income later on. Got an assisted upgrade going down. That is going to be tier two for TGX. He is probably going to start throwing down T2 point defense like a madman with the assistance of the mass right there. If he can get that push started, he'll be able to force these guys out of mid and hopefully he will secure the center of the map. Headphone guy not having any of it though. He's going to move forward and start laying down some damage on that ACU as he's in the middle of the upgrade. Once that uh, T2 upgrade comes online though, the boost in health and regen and the extra damage thrown in from that T1 point defense will be more than enough to push him back. MSG moving up. He is going to have the backing of some T1 artillery and a handful of thams more than enough to secure his position against Bulletproof Bob who is unfortunately not very bulletproof. He is kind of pouring smoke out from his backpack there. Not uh, not looking too healthy for someone who is supposedly bulletproof. These bombers are still winging around the outside edge. We got two kills on that one and one kill on that one. That's probably the expansion here that was out there and maybe a T1 tank or three or two. There's not enough there for three. As predicted, T2 point defense going down. That is going to be able to lock down a large section right here all the way up to the center point of the map should he wander a little further on and lay down another point defense up there he should be able to secure a wide swath and reclaim what's left of this mass and everything else there yeah there's a lot of pebbles laying around i say pebbles those are freaking boulders by subcom scale but they can be picked up for a little bit of extra mass not a whole lot left in the center but there is some hey every little bit helps right Let's see, two power storage, already got T2P gen down for Soul Crusher, looks like an early air rush. Probably going to be pushing for the T3 ASAP as is traditional, and then in the back on the other side, Spirit is doing the same. These guys are actually fairly close in score, Soul Crusher does have an advantage in power, which is probably going to give him the upper hand in securing resource allocation sooner. Even further up, there is another T2 point defense going down. Seraphim T2 point defense is incredibly awesome at knocking out T1 units because it basically has no overkill. The beam redirects almost instantaneously to new units. It can potentially kill two T1 units at a time, just like that right there, if they are sitting close together. So highly efficient at knocking out weak units with a ton of DPS available for the bigger ones and obviously it is one of the more expensive point defense and has a little bit longer build time in return for that strength no aoe though which can be a bummer sometimes when you get into firebase wars memento may be in over his head he is under 1800 health and still walking forward what are you doing get back 1300 here comes the mercies and kaboom that is why you don't over extend holy cow that was bad Ugh. no air power on the north side except for this little clump of interceptors that is sitting way up there in the base that was a t2 mercy push for the rear player and an easy knockout since there's absolutely no anti-air available to help out that teammate well that's gonna put the northern team a little bit off their footing right at the start but hey there's attack launcher that may very well pick up the slack there are mobile missile launchers moving in the inevitable viper spam that every cybern player takes part in maybe that attack launcher will be able to get off a couple of missiles before it gets killed there's the launch and it is headed for Oh, why'd you go and do that now? It's actually launching at the T2 factory. Maybe not the worst choice. That was what was dumping mobile missile launchers onto the field, but there's still three online. Which is going to be more than enough to swamp all of those TMD. Also, you don't want to start rebuilding a point defense on that spot after those units have been firing at it. Because there's going to be more missiles incoming, which will damage the new structure. I don't know. If you want to get the build time bonus, I guess it's still plausible as long as you can maintain uh, your HP versus the mobile missile launchers. But honestly, I don't think I would do it. I don't know. Maybe it's worth something. We'll reserve our judgment. Got a couple of mercies up in the top left corner. Apparently those were given to white by the air player i'm not sure what they're intended to be used for unless he may try to get a snipe 
on that ACU, but way too much health there. And there are a couple of interceptors that's gonna get zapped out of the sky just like that. Tubular object falling from the sky. Robo Danny does have the gun upgrade. I'm just trying to figure what his plan is. He's kind of standing still there, absorbing all of the damage coming in from the T1 artillery, from the Mongeese. All of this stuff can be easily dodged if he just moves around a little bit. Sidestep, move your feet, buddy. And no, he's just going to sit there and he shed half of his health versus a force that he should have obliterated with no problem whatsoever. TGX Legend Lore taking a little bit of fire in the middle. MSG throwing down a T2 power generator, followed by a shield. That Seraphim shield is going to be a problem to break through to kill those commanders. But I think the movement has slowed down considerably, so we're probably going to see a little bit of a stall here. As the players scale up to the next tech level and figure out what they are going to do to kill off the other side of the map. One opportunity that was missed... This up here was empty for just a little while. I do know that there's units here now. But I really wish we would have seen Grim Preacher try to exploit this right side more. Now there's just going to be extra eco for Soul Crusher to use for his air domination. And that is not going to end well for the other team once he starts rolling on that. Looks like he is on his second resource allocation upgrade. And substantially ahead in mass income if the register is to be believed 60 income let's take a look at spirit he is at 32 income trying to pull that resource allocation upgrade with just not enough mass holy cow brother you should not be doing that look at that bar creep if you're ahead on mass or if you're ahead on power and not enough mass then you could technically reclaim some power generators to get a little mass to feed you but that was just a horribly timed resource allocation upgrade you see he does have an asf up already somehow on that minuscule mass supply he has actually got a t3 air factory and he is pushing asf man alive that is not a good situation to be in soul crusher leaping far far ahead as he finishes up that resource allocation. Doesn't even have a T3 factory yet, and he is already several K score ahead, 3K ahead with the other player having an ASF. So that means there's going to be a huge advantage there later on in the game. So we'll just have to keep an eye on that. On this side, that would be a T2 upgrade that just went down, and the gun upgrade. So that's a pretty dang strong commander sitting right there. Definitely do not want to mess with that position in the middle still got pretty much everything here exactly the same as well as on the right side And now ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the part of the game where we wait for something to happen This is exactly what I was afraid of. I need to stay awake punch myself in the face do something There we got a couple of t2 fighter bombers on the left side those Nothas, they do not have good area of effect. They're very, very easy to dodge, but they do pack a punch. It's kind of like a T2 version of the Aeon Strap Bomber. The easiest one to dodge with the nastiest hit if it does connect with its target. Looks like we're going to see a bit of a push down here for MSG. He has got Nano Regen, T2, and the gun upgrade tanking all of that damage from those Cerberus turrets so that his artillery can catch up. Artillery obliterating this base a few shells at a time there overcharges connecting with the point defense wiping out the units with the ACU and that is going to be GG on that fire base vipers laying in fire from afar but when your missiles don't track you really don't have a lot of luck hitting mobile units unless there's just an, a, an incredibly huge group now that being said it is easier for vipers to hit stuff than other mobile missile launchers because their firing rate is so high but they still don't track and they still have issues, so you can't really use them effectively as an anti-unit weapon. Unless, like I said, the attacking group is just so big that the mobile missile launchers are firing at the ones in the front and hitting the ones in the back as they travel. A lot of T2 engineers up there. I'm not sure what they need that much build power on the front for, especially when there's only 71 mass to be had. 
but it is there nonetheless available for use and we're just about to see completion on a T3 power or T3 mass extractor rather I believe that is actually the first T3 mass extractor in this game they'll got a T1 back here or spirit double strap bomber that is not something you want to see happening but there are a couple of ASF online for spirit he's gonna be able to knock that one out of the sky pretty easily Noth is coming in for Parzival's commander but I don't know that that is actually going to succeed a lot of help being shed but yep there we go a little bit of a dodge a little bit of a weave and everything is completely and totally fine because Nathas cannot hit the broadside of a barn unless that barn is stationary. You know, it's actually a really apt comparison because when you think about the scale of Supreme Commander units, these things are freaking huge. If I remember the scale right, like the chicken is about the same height as the Eiffel Tower or something like that. I cannot remember. There's a two scale representation floating around somewhere on the internet. But anyway, yeah, that chess piece is about the same size as a barn, realistically speaking. So, more accurate than you would think it was. Mo units moving around the right-hand side. Those are going to try to get the drop on this expansion over here. But there are a couple of triads going down. As long as they have radar coverage, two T2 point defense should be able to hold off that amount of tanks. Because they've got to come in and defeat the incredibly advantageous range of those guys. This is where... I am starting to babble a little bit, so I do apologize. Let me collect my thoughts and present that in a more concise manner. T1 point defense is better if you build it like on the back side of a choke where units crash into it because it does way more DPS on a short range. However, when you have full range engagement like this, T2 point defense do really, really well because their range is their advantage. They're able to gain all of the time firing for those units as they advance as opposed to engaging at point blank range once you're at the point blank t2 artillery is or t2 point defense is way worse than t1 mm, we're about to find that out there goes the engineer looks like we're about to lose a couple of those point defense there's some mongies coming in from the top redirection of fire reinforcements from the back and those tanks will be dealt with so nice recovery there grim preacher is going to keep his side secure and on the north, I saw T3 units. There we go. Awful Lothams. Way to go, bud. That's how you use your terrain to your advantage. And now moving off to the right. That was a complete and utter facepalm moment right there. I don't think they did any damage at all to those Vipers. It was all into the rock face, which is incredibly sad. Let's see, we've got two players at T3 Air now. That would be UEF T3 Air. And on the north side, it is only Soul Crusher. He is the solitary airman. Nobody else providing any support other than a couple of T1 bombers coming out here and there. I am waiting for our first T4 because we're at 20 minutes. There's several people who have an eco scaled up enough to push out a T4 and we have not seen one started yet. Yeah, there it is right there, Monkey Lord. What am I talking about? 13,000 health on that baby. He will be ready to launch in about a minute and a half to two minutes, judging by the income of Robo Dandy. Whether or not he will get anything done is another guess. There's the Athotha. Brink, open your big mouth and insert foot because there are multiple T4s prepping on the map, and you just were not paying attention. So, this, the flow of the game is about to shift. We're starting to see some clumps of T3 coming online. Of course, the Othams that we commented on just a minute ago up there in the top left corner. And then on the bottom right, we've got some Loyalists and a Brick. Nice little combat cluster, honestly, because the Brick can provide ranged support while the loyalists move in for the kill that EMP weapon a great asset <clears throat> asset when you're engaging large numbers of units and loyalists do have a great ass as well there I said it cyber are amazing alright Otham's moving in on the commander there I don't think there's enough to make a difference a handful of overcharges in that force is annihilated and I'm looking at two people who are on the same team holy crap 
See, this is the moment where you have to debate in your head. Is it actually worth it to be casting when you're not mentally alert in order to stay on schedule? It, it's, it's a huge point of contention because if you drop your schedule then you're an unreliable caster and your content is not coming out as it should be. But then again, if you're delivering inferior content, ugh, what do you do? Unless it can be hilarious, which I don't think I'm that hilarious when I'm sleepy, but I guess we'll find out. Chicken moving in. The AoE on that is brutal. If that thing connects with the group of T3, you can usually get a ton of kills. That chicken is coming in basically undamaged, but the Monkey Lord should be able to kill it. It has not vetted yet. It's seven kills away. If he can get in there quick enough, it will not vet. So, basically you have to play zigzag. You have to dodge around the large area of effect shots while getting in range with your laser and then walk around to the back. You can see he's already taken two of the large overcharges coming from the chest of that Yathatha and that is pretty much a recipe for, or not, not the chest. I don't think it comes from the chest. I cannot remember the origination, the origination point. Origin point, whatever it is. Anyway, it doesn't matter because there were loyalists coming in for backup. That lightning storm is going to ferociously savage the front end of Bulletproof Bob's base. But, hey, we got two T4 wrecks on the south side, so that's going to provide a tasty bit of mass with which to build, well, yeah, pretty much whatever they want to. Tack Launcher, online and firing all the way back into the base, killing off a mass extractor there. Got to build TMD, or you could actually just put a loyalist there. Bam! Boomerang tax. Unfortunately, there are hills in the way. When the loyalist boomerangs attack, it makes a literal straight line trajectory for the origin point, so it will inevitably hit some form of terrain. Basically, the only time it doesn't is if you're guarding the edge of a shore and Navy is firing at you because obviously water is flat and therefore the attack can make it all the way back. But it is a cool mechanic nonetheless. Loyalist moving back in to guard the base. Pretty much the only effective way to guard against tacks in this game. The only good way because you can build, I don't know, a dozen Loyalists, shift G them into one spot and that can deny a ton of cruiser and tack missile fire and then if they decide to attack something else you can just run over there you don't have to rebuild your tmd anywhere you can just move the ones that you've got excellent cost saving me uh measure obviously they're not as efficient as regular attack defense one by one but once you start considering the fact that you can move them around and they can also defend themselves and your base well they are a pretty dang good investment even if you're only building them for use in your base. So another Monkey Lord going down. The wreckage is already pulled up on one hand and then the Athatha is being gotten on the other. Headphone guy building a fat boy and another air factory. So he is serious about this T3 air game. He wants to own the skies and he's gonna ram that fat boy directly into the northern team with that air control. Might as well build your own if you can't if you think you can't depend on your teammate for air. And has been done many, many, many times, and some would argue that it is safer since you really shouldn't rely on your teammates for much of anything unless it's pre planned. Can't just assume that people are going to be doing things. MSG throwing down another chicken. That is a lot of mercies. Holy cow. The flak has done its work. Not the flak, the T1 anti air, though. 11,000 health left. That was 15,000 damage worth of mercies that connected if all of them had if he hadn't been quite so quick on his toes he potentially could have died there but as things stand he is going to live to fight another day a whole bunch of loyalists moving off to the right hand side that's probably going to try to sneak up the outside edge and do some damage to this base up here don't know if they'll be successful or not well they probably will because there's only ultras to defend against them there is an acu moving in that direction though 14,000 health and regening quickly. Normally you'd say, get away from the T3 units with your commander, but when you got the gun upgrade and all that other jazz on your ACU as Seraphim, you're pretty well safe against small numbers of T3. Couple of overcharges, a little bit of regen, you will make it through. But those loyalists are going to punch a hole directly through the right-hand side. 
There are sniper bots online though, which should, I repeat, should be able to pick those guys off from a pretty good range, unless there is terrain in the way. Then all of those glorious ambitions will come to a screeching halt. All right, Loyalist rounding the edge. About to see those flashes of light coming in and there they go. Long relied, reload time for the win. Not going to do that much actually. That is kind of depressing. If they'd all been focused on one, they would have killed one with the initial volley. But as things sit, we're gonna see sniper bots go down, T3 engineers go down, and a very small amount of eco, most likely. I hear a chicken. Where is that chicken? There he is. Trekking southward. Actually, the hot pink chicken looks kind of crazy. I won't hold pink against that guy at all. On the left, we have a fat boy. Company by a couple of Percivals and some mobile flag. Looks like a single chicken for Robo Danny. And moving in on the base now. I appreciate the thought of Ravagers. Ravagers are definitely not a bad idea, but I think it's just a little too little, a little too late. Only, apparently that chicken is terrified by the sight of a single half-built Ravager because he is fleeing for the hills and now turning around yet again. Not sure what he's doing. Dancing the dosy -do, do Ugh, stuck on a cliff face. And now he's moving forward. Should be able to kill all that stuff, no problem. There's only a single Ravager, so... I don't really see why it shouldn't. There's the flaming ball of death and kaboom. One shot, three kills. Very high DPS on that weapon output. Chicken's gonna catch the fat boy out. This is why you do not wander too close with the fat boy. It loses to every single other T4 unless the fat boy can kite it. Fat boy does a lot of damage over a really good range. But unfortunately, it just does not have the health. It just doesn't have the health to hold up against any of the other direct fire T4s. Actually, it seems like it has trouble hitting stuff too once it comes closer because of the incredibly wide spread on the firing pattern for that gun. Well, three guns, I should say. It seems like it can never fire from all four in the same direction because one is always on the back side of the cab. Unless, I guess, if you nose directly into a target, it could find a firing solution. All that aside, it does not do very well versus single targets, but it does do incredibly well for breaking shields and tearing down fire bases. That would be a nuke. I actually caught it before it launched. Well, wonders never cease. It is about 60% loaded, so we're gonna have to check in in maybe two minutes to see how that launching sequence goes. Pars of all in spirit, just kind of hanging out. Little buddies on the south side. And no, we don't have subcom gangs that I know of, divided by geographical locations or directions. Strap bombs coming in. What is that? Trying to clean out that monkey lord seems like a little bit of a waste of five strats, especially when it is fleeing from a chicken. I don't know. I guess that does kind of prevent it from turning and fighting because its HP is going to be too low. With the help of the Percivals, though, it is still a very, very dangerous threat. MSG building another chicken from behind the safety of his many, many T2 point defense. Not entirely sure what he's planning there, considering the fact that he is going to have to deal with someone who's building fat boys. But if he feels safe, then we'll let him use his blankie. Otham's moving in on the south side, taking out that little tiny shred of eco. And then those will probably move in on the south, try to overtake all of this base in the south. That would be highly, highly useful. Soul Crusher still doing far and away the best out of anybody here. 277 mass income on 19k power versus 
146 mass on 8.4k power income for the south side so his production should be astronomically higher but you can see evidence by the fact that he's building strat bombers when you no longer feel the need to build asf that is when you know that you're far far ahead of your opposing air player because otherwise strats would end in disaster still chilling out and that my friends is a megalith that's going to cause some problems for the north team a fat boy coupled with a megalith is just about the strongest thing that you can feel because you have long range fire support paired with the strongest direct fire t4 in this entire game and both units do have area of effect it can lead to some really nasty business getting thrown down when all of those units collide looks like the monkey lord is just going to kind of hang out in the middle there taking a little bit of fire from a couple of artillery pieces but shrugging it off no concern sniper bots on the move snipers not sure what they're going for actually they're a long ways away from any potential units to kill and this is going to be why not just overcharge them take your ACU walk up to the first one and overcharge a pair you don't have to build point defense there's no waste and the tanks can't really go around you at that point double chicken this is not something that you want to have happening to your front line this however is a good deal we're seeing the chicken be walked in in order to drop that lightning storm on top of as many percivals as he can and then walking the other back so he doesn't take unnecessary damage that is how you skillfully and properly use the lightning storm of that unit i do agree that the lightning storm may be a little bit broken like when the unit's building and it goes off but overall that tool is pretty dang well balanced if you let it go off in your own base you kind of deserve it and if you send it across to the other person's base, well, then you can laugh hysterically as the hammer of Thor descends upon everything that dares to come within reach. Megalith is just about three quarters of the way complete, and we do have a fat boy online that is going to be moving towards the north side, it looks like. Maybe the middle. Also a monkey lord there. Lots of T4s coming into play two chickens on the detected. south as well and there's the nuke that we've been waiting for where is it going to hit right there right next to that newly started monkey lord hasn't even finished building yet and i don't think it will finish before that nuke comes crashing into this party i don't believe there is any nuke defense either so this is going to be a real problem for the southern team to be honest they probably could have picked a better probably could have picked a better location to drop that nuke there's not really that much to be killed there of consequence a little bit of eco a factory part of the uh, megalith i don't know it did kind of send him back to square one maybe it's worth it maybe it is worth it as long as the person who was versus the guy that got nuked can jump up to the task and help out one of his teammates because basically we're going to see bulletproof bob drop off the face of the earth for a couple minutes except for the single solitary monkey lord that he happened to get out and for the next little bit this entire lane can shift focus and assist versus <clears throat> versus this fat boy i do believe there's a frog in my throat Sam's doing their work. This is exactly what you do when you're losing air. <clears throat> Maybe not to that exact extent, because there it is possible to waste mass on that. Like I wouldn't have built four, I would have built one. But a good spread out grid of Sam's is essential in the late game where you're gonna start seeing air T4s and strap bombers slung back and forth team to team. It's just a good way to put the brakes on that or to even assist in an air win for your air player by dealing damage to the opponent's ASF. Remember that SAMs do have very, very small area of effects. They do damage several ASF at a time when they're all clumped up into the normal flight group. 
Looks like we're about to have a dead commander. We've got a half health and a full health Yathotha. And Grim Preacher has nothing whatsoever to protect himself with. Those chickens are pursuing relentlessly. Looks like Grim Preacher is going to bite the bullet, move back, overcharge. Looks like he's at least going to take out one or get it down to where the Restorer can kill it. But there's still a second chicken. And this one is not going to be so easy to deal with. The south side is down two players now. Not a pretty position at all. More lightning. That's what every game needs. Let's see, nuke defense going down. That is going to be a strong air win for headphone guy. I actually really like that. Curling around all those ASF. Brilliantly executed turn. That means he's going to be able to use Strategic these gunships detected. to great effect as much as he wants. Second nuke. Same launcher? I believe so. So round two, where are you headed? That is an awesome collision there, Percival's versus Otham's. We all know who wins that round, but there is the chicken there. And the sniper bots as well. So easy win there. All right, nuke defense was online. The day is saved. That is a T3 artillery. Why are we building heavy artillery on hilly plateau? Why is this a thing? I mean, I do realize that you can turtle a game and go for game enders, but why? Why would you do such a thing? It will be cool to see it fire though. He's already got adjacency to one P gen, it looks like, yes. And he's got a shield over top of it, should be safe building a SAM and yeah. Looks like he's sitting in a pretty decent position there. He's going to drop this thing at almost exactly 40 minutes. So reasonably early, actually, for a T3 artillery. Not really... It is not really feasible to build them earlier than that because it wrecks your eco so mightily to get that much mass online that by the time you build the thing, you will be overrun. Although it does help when two players on the other team are dead and you're able to kind of focus on what you want to do and not necessarily what you need to do. Percival's moving over to the right and Restore's kind of tearing up all of these tanks and obsidians. Totally miscalled that. Those would be the Sathanas. Nope, that's mobile artillery. Where was the... Maybe I'm dreaming. There it is. Lightning tank. I heard a bomb. Where's the bomb? Right there. Right in the middle of the build power. Trying to land a shot on that fat boy. If I didn't know better, I would say that Bulletproof Bob was going for T3 artillery because that is a pretty distinctive power grid pattern. There's the shots coming in. That was probably not a bomb earlier. That was probably artillery shots. Looks like he is focus fired on that factory killing off. No, that's a Novax. Was there a Novax online? Did I completely miss that? That dang near killed the nuke defense holy cow that was close I did not even realize that was a Novax my bad folks I think that's the satellite yes that very nearly dropped on the nuke defense that's actually kind of hilarious nicely done that uh, that artillery is going to be causing some major major issues for the southern team Already starting to shred the build power. Seraph 
<clears throat> Seraphim Artillery does do a decent amount of area of effect, has the second longest range of any of the artilleries and reasonably good accuracy to boot. So not a bad artillery piece to use. Raining death and destruction down upon anything it chooses to target. In this case, a shield. Why are you building a duke there? He's already got his artillery targeted on this spot, headphone guy. Don't do it. Don't. You don't want to do it. Monkey Lord and Megalith pairing up with a fat boy. Those are going to be starting the push across. We've got two fat boys, Monkey Lord and Megalith total, that are going to now start the push up the center of the map, and I don't think there's much here. One fat boy is down thanks to T3 Mobile Artillery, but there's still a Megalith, another fat boy, and that monkey, which should be able to take care of that Yathotha and the T3 units that are waiting up in the stretch. Maybe not this other chicken, though. There's not enough health in those combined, I don't think. Build power going offline, some impacts on the power generators down there. Headphone guy needs to get into protection because he was slightly outside of his shield bubble and not looking entirely healthy his body shield is going away thanks to power stalling chicken bearing down on that monkey lord gonna get a lot of free damage while that thing has its back thankfully the regen is high on the monkey lord but he needs to keep on running nice little dodge there with the energy Looks like the Athotha is going to focus fire on the Monkey Lord, kill it off, and Megalith now trying to knock out that chicken. Second chicken from MSG moving up towards the front, and a third from Robo Danny moving in. Megalith going to go down. That just leaves the Percivals, and there's not enough Percivals to get the job done. Very, very sad. Restore is shredding that awesome part of a larger group just a moment ago but it is no more has been forcibly disbanded that boy doing a pretty good job there was that um yeah that was t3 mobile about to say was that the full-size artillery target on that that would be crazy but no the artillery is targeted on <clears throat> the air base yes yes Lots of build power going poof, you might say, but that's that's such a huge waste of potential damage. T3 artillery shots do so much damage. Well, in that specific instance, I think it was actually a little bit of a waste. That didn't kill that many engineers, but seriously, if you land on a clump like that and you're taking out like 25, 30, 50 engineers in one shot, then that artillery shot is most definitely worth it because you're reducing... The ability of your enemy to build combat units, which is going to eventually lead to a win for you. So, there is a method to the madness, even if the mass value is not directly equivalent. The usefulness in the late game, build power, is a commodity. You have to have mass, you have to have power, you have to have build power to spend the previous two. If you don't have build power, you're essentially crippling their unit production, which is the end goal of basically everything that happens in Supreme Commander anyway. Nice little air engagement. Soul Crusher, I think, is going to get the raw end of that deal. Having a little bit of a hard time getting in behind his opponent. He does have some mobile anti-air up front, but with a little run away from that uh, group of ASF, no real harm done. Chicken coming up the middle. That is where the real harm is. I don't see how... Well, died. Nope, sorry. Totally spaced out there for a second. At least I have not fallen asleep this cast yet. I have done that before a long time ago, and I haven't yet. So I think we're still good here. Double chicken push. I don't think that there's any way. There's one down thanks to... Let's see, there's some Percivals in the back here. Rambo Com overcharge from Headphone Guy. But he is now going to start taking damage to his commander directly. Don't walk into the lightning storm. Rambocom moving up. That's going to be a focus fire on the commander. Trying to shuffle his units around. Micro around the shots. Dodging one effectively. He's going to be able to get close. Land that overcharge. Keep on trucking. Shield is down. And there goes the chicken. 8,000 health. No. No, don't do that. 
No! You did so well, and you're gonna walk your commander right into the nuke. Ah, no. Run away! Nope. He saw it coming, and he tried to turn around, but it was no good. That is the end of Headfo Guy as we know him, and here comes a T4 bomber. It looks like the north side has just scaled up beyond the south's Strategic ability to stop them. Bulletproof Bob going up. That's going to be an Awasa drop on the Eco there. I don't know if he control K'd when he saw the Awasa coming in or if a handful of those units actually managed to kill him. But at this point, it does not really matter because I think we can decisively say that the north side has won this. A dozen strats coming in for the ACU kill. Not if the Awasa gets it first, but I don't think that's very likely. Awasa going to obliterate all of these NGs. Let's look, let's look. Strategic launch 68 detect. kills. And there goes the ACU. That only leaves Parzival. I think I used to play with Parzival a long time. That That name sounds really, really familiar. Drop, getting the shields down for the Aeon strats to follow, and there she blows. Man, he had the nuke covered, but there's also three chickens coming in across the front. Don't think there's really any way he could have stopped that. And that is that is the end. Alrighty, folks, I hope you enjoyed that game. I know that I did, at least for what I wasn't spaced out on. <laughs> I am going to go ahead and get this uploaded. By the time you see this, I will have implemented my um, my pre-recording schedule. So this is actually going to be releasing at 1 p.m. on probably Thursday, possibly Tuesday. And just because I said probably Thursday, it's going to end up coming out on Tuesday because I always prove myself wrong like that. So from here on out, we're actually going to have full 1080p on release. There's going to be a set schedule for when videos comes come out. And I've actually added a bit of content to the roster, as you guys have seen over the last week. So there's actually four, count them, four Supcom games up on the channel every week. And then one that I do with Orbital Potato on his channel for a total of five. So tons of Supreme Commander content for y'all. I told you that I was not going to slack off on Supcom, and I am going to hold myself to that for as long as as I possibly can. I've made it a year so far and haven't burned out yet. So I can't promise there won't be a burnout at some point, but I'm going to keep on trucking with it as long as I possibly can. And then adding in some game reviews and a little bit of other content as well. You'll see some of that pop up here and there. I'm going to do my best to get out around six videos a week. I'm going to try to do Monday through Saturday if I can. I'm not going to promise the other couple of days, but I will when I am able and I have things that I can give to y'all. So Enjoy all of that lovely stuff that is coming your way. I hope you have an awesome day. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.